Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. easy, 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 easy. Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown. When 3D first came out to PCs, I was all over it. I used to use these NVIDIA 3D vision glasses to play video games, you know, and I thought it was awesome. I had a special monitor to, to play them on. I also could play the games and even watch movies on this Acer 3D projector. Uh, but, you know, it didn't take off, unfortunately, possibly because you had to wear those glasses. Uh, but imagine a situation whereby you don't need to wear those glasses at all. Well, Acer announced a couple of years ago a Spatial Labs Concept D7 mobile workstation. Now, this was geared towards 3D creative artists and engineers, but now they have developed a technology that allows not only glasses-free uh, 3D games, but also the creation of 3D modeling and also the ability to convert your existing 2D content into 3D. They have, uh, they have Spatial Labs view monitors, so you can attach any PC. Now, perhaps it's only a matter of time until they have TV with this technology. Well, Acer sent me the Helios 300 to check out. Although this is the last generation, it is more than capable with, capable with an i9 12900H CPU, RTX 3080, 32GB of DDR5 RAM, 2TB SSD, and a 15.6-inch 4K 60Hz 3D IPS panel. It costs about $3,500 over at Newegg, which isn't cheap. So my advice is to wait for the 13th gen with the RTX 4080 to be released. You know, that's going to come very shortly, as this model will definitely drop in price. In a nutshell, the technology works. In some games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Borderlands 2, it is absolutely brilliant. Whilst in some games like Forza Horizon 5 or Trackmania, you know, it doesn't work at all. Now, there are about 80 supported games and new ones are being added all of the time. They categorise each game as 3D Plus and 3D Ultra. Now, 3D Plus utilises a depth buffer from the game engine to simulate a stereo image. This is done by shifting pixels of objects in your view to make objects that are far away seem like they are in the distance and those that are close to you, you know, make them appear that they're right in front of you. Now, this requires less processing power but the 3D effect isn't as good as 3D Ultra. This simulates the effect of two cameras capturing the gameplay and rendering it back to the player. It features Ace's automatic 3D focus adjustment to ensure objects that pop out of the screen remain in focus. Now, the hardest thing from a reviewer's perspective is <laughs> how the heck do I show the 3D effect to you? Now, I did try capturing the 3D footage via OBS Streamlabs, and it, could, uh, it couldn't record the footage, unfortunately. Now, there is a set of stereo cameras at the top of the panel with a, a red light showing that the 3D cameras are working. Now, they track the position of the movement of your eyes and your head. Well, Acer suggested that I make a cutout of your face to trick these cameras into thinking you were looking at the screen. You know, cut a hole in one of your eyes and place your cell phone camera so that, you know, it looks through that hole and, you know, move the whole setup from side to side. Now, although the footage, footage doesn't show the real 3D effect, you can certainly see that something is going on. The 3D effect is much better when you face the centre of the screen and, you know, don't move too far off that axis. Here is what my daughter and a friend of mine thought of it. Wow, yeah, the images are really good. Yeah? Yeah, at first it was, like, blurry, but, like, it's actually really good now. And the, I can still, I can read it better now. The text is better? Yeah, the text is better. Yeah, you got to keep your head central. Yeah, I know. If yeah. you move to the side, it's also good. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Whoa. So we came out, out at the screen there, didn't it? Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Some games, the image really pops out at you. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I could even see ash you know, floating in front of my eyes. Now, other games, you know, it's like looking into a window. It doesn't so much pop out, but it, it has a good depth and definitely adds to the game. Others, like Ori and the Will of the Wisps, has the scene in flat layers, you know, creating like a, a depth effect. The panel is 4K at 60 hertz, so it's not the best gaming panel. The ghosting performance is pretty bad, to be fair, and it also isn't G-Sync compatible because that doesn't work with 3D, so you're stuck with regular Optimus. But it is plenty bright at 340 nits, 
93% of SRGB and the contrast is high at 1,020 to 1. It's certainly, you know, plenty bright and vivid for content creation and playing 3D games. Now, none of the 3D games are competitive shooters. They say that this is because the typical anti-cheat software associated with those games aren't compatible with 3D. It does need a bright screen to get the best effect, but it did show a bit of backlight bleed. Now, you must load the game via Spatial Labs True Game, which looks just like Steam. Each 3D game has a specially created 3D profile, and some you can alter the depth um, of the 3D effect. Or you can just actually do it within game using a series of keyboard uh, shortcuts. You can also choose to play it either in 3D Plus or 3D Ultra. Now, the panel has a liquid crystal lenticular lens optically bonded on top of it. Now, together, you can switch between 2D and 3D views. In addition to True Game, you have three more Spatial Labs apps. You have Spatial Labs Go, Spatial Labs Model Viewer, and Spatial Labs Player. The Spatial Labs Go is really cool, as it allows you to turn any 2D video, photo, or even video conference into 3D, and it does work very well, even giving you control of the 3D effect. Now, for the Spatial Labs player, you do need to have uh, two stereoscopic 3D images, and the player will then combine the two into a single 3D footage. The model viewer allows you to look at models in 3D. You can rotate the image by 360 degrees, and I think this is very good for design work. Now, there's also a website called Sketchfab to which you can load up models or view them in the browser window. Just click on the VR, VR symbol and you'll see the image in glorious 3D. And I found that it worked very well. All in all, I was very impressed with the 3D across these apps. You have good control of the amount of depth. And for gaming, there's, uh, there's an ever-expanding list of games. And if you don't want to play in 3D, you know, it's easy to turn off. Now, all the games I played handle 3D well. So the RTX 3080 is capable, even at 4K. But it is clear that some newer games will benefit from the newer RTX 4080. Now, some games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider had V-Sync enabled, and in this case, the only way to remove it was you know, to play in 2D. So to measure the effect of 3D on frame rate, I chose uh, Psycho Nauts 2 um, using the high preset and 1080p. In 3D, I got 1% lows of 66 FPS and average of 110, whilst in 2D, the 1% lows increased 125 FPS and the average to 210. So basically playing in 3D half your frame rate. You can imagine then at 4K, this can be quite taxing on your GPU and I'm not sure whether DLSS works in 3D. The option for it is grayed out in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As for thermals, the Helios 300 ran very cool. In the default power mode, the 12900H and the 3080 were in the low 70s and the fan noises are manageable 51 decibels. I switched this to turbo mode and the 3080 jumps from about 130 watts to 150 watts and the 12900H jumps from about 3700 MHz to 4400 megahertz. The frame rate jumps around about 10% and the thermals are still in the 70s, which is no surprise given the super loud 71 decibel fan noise. Build quality is good with an aluminium lid and an aluminium keyboard deck. It is quite clean looking and not overly gamery looking. You have a small Predator logo below the panel and also one on the lid. Underneath it is actually made out of plastic and has good air intakes as well as air intakes above the keyboard. As for ports, you get one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, you have one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. There's a Thunderbolt 4 port that supports DisplayPort and USB charging as well as an HDMI 2.1, RJ45 and a combo headphone mic jack. Now the webcam is only 720p, unfortunately. So it's a 720p webcam and it does a very good job of, uh, you know, muting the uh, turbo fan. So here you go. We pressed it and it does a good job, I think. Now you do get a 90 watt hour battery. I didn't test the battery life as I wanted to, you know, focus on the 3D here, but I would expect around about four to five hours. Now there was no mug switch, so it runs on Optimus all of the time. To gain access to the Predator Sense software, you press the dedicated button embedded in the separate number pad. Now, I've always liked their software. It's easy to use. Here, you can choose the power profile, quiet, default, extreme, and turbo. The latter can also be activated by a dedicated button. You can also choose max fan or alter the fan speed of the CPU and the GPU individually. As for the key lighting, you can select groups of keys, such as the AWSD keys, to have the same colour so they stand out. 
or you can change the color of each key individually or choose one of several dynamic effects. There's also a very subtle light bar at the front. So is the Helios 3D edition worth buying at 3,500? Well, if it had the 3900HX on the RTX 4080, it would be a yes for sure. It definitely adds something in gaming, and if you are a 3D designer, it is even more useful. Now, the model in this review should drop down to around about 2,500 or lower, in my opinion. Now, let me know in the comments what you think. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.